The Merchant of Venice is one of Shakespeare's best known comedies. Now, it features lots of characters, including Antonio, Bassanio, Shylock, Portia, Nerissa. However, it's also one of his more controversial comedies. When I say controversial, I mean lots of people, especially modern day people, have read it and maybe felt a little bit strongly about, for example, how it's somewhat anti-Semitic. So for example, the main bad guy is portrayed to be a Jewish man. Of course, also there are elements of sexism where you've got a daughter who's still controlled by her father beyond his grave. However, if you are studying this play, I will be going over it in lots of detail because of course, there's lots of different elements of Merchant of Venice that you need to understand. It is a comedy, however, it has lots of underlying themes. And of course, you need to be very, very familiar with lots of its characters. So what I will be doing in the videos that follow is I'll be going over the plot of the play in summary and in a nutshell. And then I will go over key characters, show you the key quotations to remember, and of course, also the key themes to bear in mind before I walk you through past paper exam questions and how you can write about Merchant of Venice under exam conditions and apply your knowledge of this play to your writing. So let's get started. So let's begin by examining this entire play all five acts and all the key events that happen in a nutshell. So as you can see here behind me, essentially what I've done is basically create a mind map of all the major events that you need to understand and the key issues that happen within the play and we'll go over them in detail. So bear in mind that there are two major locations that are explored in this play. The main location, which is Venice, but of course also where Portia lives, which is in Belmont, okay? Now, the play begins when we meet Bassanio and Antonio. Now, Bassanio and Antonio are really, really good friends. And we learn that Bassanio, he needs 3,000 ducats as a loan in order to go and win the hand of a very rich heiress called Portia. So she's very rich, she's very beautiful, but most importantly, she has lots and lots of money. And Bassanio is really bad with his money. So if he were to marry Portia, he'd be able to clear all his debts. So basically, Bassanio asks Antonio for a loan in order to visit Portia and to win her hand in marriage when he goes to Bel Belmont. Want. However, Antonio, even if he really wants to help his friend Bassanio and give him yet another loan, he says that basically all of his cargo is tied up in all of these different ventures. Therefore, he says that even if he wants to help him, he can't, he doesn't have the money on him right there. However, what he wants to do is basically say, on the strength of his name as a merchant in Venice, he can basically go to any money lender, borrow that money from the money lender, and then use Antonio's name as security. In other words, if Bassanio doesn't pay back the money or if if Antonio doesn't pay back the money, then you know they can use some of Antonio's assets because we get the idea that Antonio is fairly well to do and he's also very prosperous in trading. So with that, Bassanio decides to go out and look for a loan from uh, the money lenders in Venice. Separately in Belmont, we learn of Portia, who's the heiress, and we find her speaking to Nerissa, who is someone that she's very close to, but also, of course, do bear in mind that Nerissa works for her. However, so she, even if they're not at the same social status, basically Portia is incredibly close to her and she confides in her. Now we find that Portia is very frustrated by her father's will. Essentially, her father said that he had very specific conditions as to who Portia can marry. He basically left a will behind that gave the men, any man who wants to marry Portia, the choice of three caskets. The first is gold, the second is silver, the third is lead. The person who picks the correct casket, and this casket will contain the picture of Portia in it, he wins her hand in marriage. Now, there have been lots of different suitors that have come in, try to uh, win Portia's hand in marriage. She's not really keen on them on the one hand, but also she's kind of frustrated that she's really limited by this. However, we also learn that Portia, because she really does want to get married, she's very frustrated on this, and she hopes that Bassanio will pick the right casket. So, so far, every other suitor that has come in, they've picked the wrong casket. Now, back in Venice, after Bassanio gets Antonio's guarantee that yes, you can go and use my name because my name is really well known around Venice to borrow money, Bassanio meets the Jewish moneylender Shylock who agrees to lend Bassanio the 3,000 ducats. However, we learn that Shylock hates Antonio. In fact, they are enemies. This is because Antonio is very anti-Semitic. 
he uh, looks down on Shylock because he is Jewish, he's even spat on him, but also he dislikes the fact that Shylock makes lots and lots of money using uh, or, or charging even lots of interest, high interest on the money that he loans, okay? So we learn that Shylock actually really hates Antonio. However, he agrees to lend Bassanio the money, okay? And he says on one condition. So he doesn't even want anything else. If Antonio, however, isn't able to pay back the money, he states that if he's unable to pay back in three months Shylock has the right to take a pound of Antonio's flesh okay now Antonio is also present when Shylock is given these conditions Bassanio is really reluctant he thinks okay uh, firstly he's Jewish I don't know if you can uh, trust him but secondly you know uh, Shylock has not really made it a secret that he doesn't like Antonio however Antonio is really really confident that all his ships which are out with their cargo selling and making lots of money they're gonna come back in good time and he's gonna be able to pay back Antonio Bassanio's 3,000 ducats. So Antonio agrees and tells Bassanio, don't worry, take the money, go off, marry Portia, okay? Now, we then learn separately that Shylock, who's basically portrayed as the villain of this play, he has a daughter called Jessica. Now, Jessica really dislikes him. She sees the house that they live in, that Shylock lives in with her as almost a prison. She really hates her heritage being a Jewish young lady. She also really hates her father and she is in love with another nobleman called Lorenzo. So she and Lorenzo hatch up a plan. Jessica decides to steal Shylock's gold and jewelry as well as his money. She dresses up as a boy and then Lorenzo goes to pick her up in the dead of the night and she runs away with him and of course they end up eloping. Eloping meaning they basically get married but not like a traditional marriage ceremony. This is when you kind of have what is sometimes called a shotgun wedding, right? So not a proper wedding. Basically you go, uh, sometimes you can go to a registrar's office and you get married just really quickly, okay? So Jessica and Lorenzo basically run off. Jessica runs off dressed as a boy and then she steals Shylock's money and then runs off to live with Lorenzo and to be his wife. Then we then learn that Antonio, unlike what he thought, he learns that his ships have sunk. Okay, so all his investments have basically been submerged in water. Now we find that Antonio has now been made bankrupt and Shylock, who's really pleased about this, he's more pleased about this than getting back his money, Shylock calls for a pound of his flesh. He says, okay, now that you can't pay me back what I loaned to Bassanio, you need to fulfill your conditions. I want a pound of your flesh. But bear in mind that if it's a pound of his flesh, if he does take it, uh, this will ultimately kill Antonio, okay? So this is Shylock's way of getting revenge on the bad treatment that Antonio has given him over the years, okay? So this is Sherlock's way of getting revenge and he does not want to forgive him. Then we learn that Bassanio in Belmont, when he's visiting Portia, he ends up choosing the correct casket. He doesn't choose the gold casket. He doesn't choose the, uh, the silver casket. He ends up choosing the lead casket, which has Portia's image. And so Portia is really delighted. The guy that she wanted to marry, he did win her hand in marriage, even if, you know, it was a, she was a little bit uh, scared and feeling a lot of tension in case he did forfeit that will and that privilege. Okay, so Bassanio ends up choosing the correct casket and he wins Portia's hands and when he does she gives him a ring and tells him this is a ring as a token of my love make sure in no circumstance can you give it away and Bassanio gives her his promise his undying promise that he will never give away this ring that's a token of Portia's love okay then we then learn that Gratiano, who's Bassanio's really good friend, also kind of like his party friend, he's also there. He meets Nerissa, falls in love with her, and he declares his love for her. And they all decide to have this big happy wedding. So uh, Bassanio will marry Portia, and separately Gratiano, who's Bassanio's friend, will marry Nerissa. And they will share the wedding ceremony together. So everything is great. However, they uh, they then learn, all of them, including Bassanio, who all of this was made possible by Antonio le letting him loan, uh, or rather take a loan from Shylock, they learn that Shylock has had Antonio arrested. He wants a pound of his flesh. And Antonio, of course, is trying to reason with him. Shylock is having none of it. He has had him arrested, okay? And thus, they have to go back to Venice. And of course, also, Portia, who learns the reasons why Bassanio is stressed out about this, she decides to do something about this. 
to help her uh, Bassanio's friend because if it wasn't for Antonio she would not be able to have met Bassanio because he wouldn't have been able to afford to go there and she would not have been married to the man that she truly loves okay so Charlotte calls uh, has Antonio arrested however Portia and Arissa travel from Belmont to v Venice and they travel again in disguise okay so bear in mind that there's a massive element of disguise from the female characters so on the one hand you've got Jessica who's Sherlock's daughter she disguises herself but also as a boy but also separately Portia and Narissa they go disguised as lawyer so Portia is disguised as a lawyer called Balthazar and Narissa is disguised as a clerk now they get to the courtroom where basically Shylock is presenting his case even if Shylock has been told to basically have some mercy he refuses now Portia who's disguised as Balthazar examines the contract that's between Antonio and Shylock and she finds a missing clause something a hole in the contract and she realizes and shows uh, as Balthazar so bear in mind she's as a man here. she shows that it doesn't mention any blood therefore the contract is null and void in other words Charlotte cannot act on his wish to take a pound of Antonio's flesh additionally she then says as Balthazar that he was attempting to harm Antonio to give mortal harm and injury which is a crime and the punishment for this is Shylock losing all his possession however Antonio is portrayed as taking some kind of sympathy on in Shylock he doesn't want Shylock to lose all of his money however he then says okay Shylock now the tables have turned what I'm going to ask you to do is firstly he uh, Antonio asks and forces Shylock to give up half of his money and possessions to Jessica and Lorenzo so his daughter who's already stolen from him but also separately and again this is part of the anti-semitic element Antonio forces and tells Shylock that he also has to renounce his Jewish heritage and convert into being a Christian then after that uh, Bassanio and Antonio are so thankful to Balthazar because bear in mind that Balthazar looks like a man he's you know cleverly interpreted this contract and they you know they approach him so Antonio and Bassanio approach Balthazar and say we don't know how to thank you is there any way we can give you a gift and Balthazar of course bear in mind that Balthazar is Portia he cheekily asks for the rings that both Gratiano and Bassanio have so at first especially Bassanio is really reluctant because he remembers the promise that he'd made to Portia that he would never part with his ring but after a lot of persuasion lots and lots of persuasion from Balthazar especially you know I've saved your friend's life what else could, could uh, I have done you know you really need to give me a ring so after lots and lots of persuasion both Gratiano and Bassanio are persuaded to give Balthazar their rings okay and of course obviously that's going to cause some kind of marital issue because Portia and Nerissa obviously change out of their disguise They're then rush back to Belmont to get there before Gratiano and Bassanio and then when Gratiano and Bassanio arrive and they're asked to see their rings they then argue and give them a really hard time where's the rings you know they um, feign they act like they're really angry that basically Gratiano and Bassanio have lost their rings so they first argue with them and obviously that's the comedic element however later on they then reveal so both Portia and Larissa believe uh, reveal that they were disguised they were there in the courtroom and it was them that had the rings okay then then the final element that makes this a happy ending, happy for everyone apart from Shylock, is Portia then gives Antonio a letter showing that all of his ships are safe and sound so he didn't lose all of his money and he didn't become bankrupt after all okay so there's lots of comedy uh, in this play but also lots of disguise however of course bear in mind that even if it ends as a happy ending especially from an Elizabethan perspective from a contextual perspective uh, it wasn't a happy ending for Shylock all right so that's really it when it comes to understanding the general issues and the general plot of Merchant of Venice in a nutshell. So hopefully this gives you a really, really good idea of what happens in the play.